Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll do a second entry here based on your suggestions. This one is a little bit of a downer of sorts. Be prepared. It's not something that has necessarily a happy ending, but it was very, very fascinating to read. I looked at various websites online with regards to this Urban Legend, and it was amazing to see how... Uh, uh, tragic this particular urban legend is if you're a fan of a dog in particular like let's say you have either one dog or multiple dogs in your household you'll definitely understand the sadness associated with this urban legend I'm talking about the urban legend known as Gellert and it actually has to do with a dog the dog's name, uh, well actually it's, uh, it's associated at least, is Gellert. And the reason for the urban legend is because it's the way apparently that the dog died and then continues to have his grave associated with a location that lives there to this day. I mean, you can actually go visit this grave and then purportedly that is the grave of the dog itself in this urban legend. So what is the urban legend known as Geller? Well, it's a pretty old one. You have to go back actually to the 13th century, in fact, to order in order to get a good understanding of where this all started. Now, I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, though, how some of this stuff that I'm about to mention could actually be false. There's no real proof associated with uh, what I'm about to mention. If anything, it may just be the... Um, the creation of some savvy business people trying to create I guess some more tourism but it's up to you to decide so this is the actual urban legend it goes like this um, apparently again back in the 13th century there was a prince of some sort prince of Wales who went by the name of Llewellyn I believe that's how this name is said he was someone that was very very fond of dogs he had a good number of hounds and the reason for this was because he used to always hunt with his dogs in particular he had a favorite one an Irish wolf dog that went by the name of Gellert so there they were they would always go out together him and then some of his other followers along with the dogs they would go hunting and then they would go back to their home thereafter um, Gellert uh, was um, you know the favorite again of Llewellyn and then uh, Llewellyn himself also had a son who Gellert was very, very protective of. Uh, the son was just barely, I guess the way the story goes, a baby, maybe even a couple of months old at most. And that's when there was one evening or one morning of sorts that things were a little different. There, Ge there Llewellyn was. He was trying to go hunting again with his hounds, but he could not find Gellert. And so he went off um, altogether with his followers, with his hounds. Towns. They went hunting, but because he could not find initially Gellert, it wasn't as fun of a day as this guy, this Prince of Wales, would normally have. So he kind of cut the day short, went back to his home, and as usual, he was greeted, in this case by Gellert, coming up straight to him, I guess, all excited to see him. You know how dogs are. The dog lovers out there, whenever you come home, it's like your dog has not seen you for who knows how many lifetimes, and they're so, so excited to see you. Well, when this guy, Llewellyn, the Prince of Wales, saw his dog, he was horrified to notice that Gellert was actually covered in blood. At first, he thought that there was something wrong with Gellert himself, like maybe he was harmed. But the way the urban legend goes, this trail of blood led actually to the cradle that his young son was in. And then on top of that, there was blood covered everywhere on the cradle itself. I mean, the cradle was overturned. Uh, there was blood on the blanket. There was no sign of the child. And so much to his horror, Llewellyn at that very moment thought to himself, that's why I could not find Gellert. He must have done something with my son. And it came to his utter horror that this dog, this, this favorite dog of his, for whatever reason, must have killed and then eaten the baby. Because, again, the baby was not found anywhere when this guy, Llewellyn, came in. So horrified at this and then growing angry as well, Llewellyn drew his sword, the one he was just used, I guess, for hunting throughout the day and then plunged it right into his favorite dog. I guess it must have been 
so so tragic you know to have realized that that a favorite companion of his had committed this horrific act and this dog apparently died it was a, not a quick death it was a slow death a bunch of howls finally there was a long it was described as a long drawn out howl and then he died right there and then the that's is where the urban legend though takes its own tragic course it was that last long drawn out howl that actually caught the attention of in this case Llewellyn's son his son was there he was underneath the pile of bedding and when he went to inspect that sound he found that his son was right there untouched unharmed completely protected underneath that pile of bedding and then next to that pile of bedding there was a wolf and this wolf was already dead and that's when this guy Llewellyn put two and two together he realized that this blood was not from the baby and it was not from Gellert maybe it was from Gellert but it was at least definitely from the wolf who was dead so this wolf must have come into Llewellyn's home he must have tried to eat in this case the son of Llewellyn and then of course Gellert the faithful hound was not having any of it and then protected the baby as much as he could probably putting them under the bedding and then taking on the wolf itself and then was able to kill the wolf and protect him but of course with the tragic circumstances and the way that uh, that that Llewellyn found his home he would have known none of this and then at that point that's when the urban legend states that Llewellyn realized you know how just how horrible his decision was and so what he did at that point is he took the body of his faithful dog Gellert and then buried it with some like I guess fancy ceremony something uh, to, 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 to pay the utmost respect to what his dog had done and then afterwards he placed like a plaque of some sort I don't know if it was a rock or it was something else but the urban legend goes that there was something at least describing the location of the grave itself and ever since then it's been known as bed Gellert I don't know why it has to do with the word bed but it's been known as that, otherwise known as the grave of Gellert. And to this day, you can go there to that specific location and you'll be able to find that grave. In fact, you're looking at a picture of it right there as well. And someone, I guess, somewhere later on put in an official plaque of sorts, which showcases the legend tied to the dog. There's even been... Uh, poems associated with this urban legend it's taken on a life of its own people even surmise that the city that it's called the reason it's called bed gellert is the fact that it's dedicated to this faithful dog as well so that is the urban legend now a couple of minutes ago i mentioned um how everything that was just stated may have been i guess false only through the i guess this the the scav the the I guess the best word I'm looking for is someone that was trying to make sure that they wanted to attract, not necessarily in a nefarious way, but wanted to make sure that they could get more tourism in. It could have been actually that because there's this book that was out there that was written and it's called Bed Gellert is Facts, Fairies, and Folklore. And it's by his author by the name of Mr. D.E. Jenkins. He states that upon his local research, he found that in 1793, there was this gentleman, a guy by the name of David Pritchard. He moved from South Wales there to the Gell to Bed Gellert area. He took over a hotel that was called the Royal Goat Hotel. And when he did so, he realized that he needed more customers in his area. So what he did was apparently he decided this place already had a mess you know a grave of some sort whatever it was it was there now whether it had to actually do with everything i just mentioned most likely not but this guy decided you know what i'm going to create my own story my own urban legend of sorts around this location that way it'll spread and when that happens then people will come they'll have to take a look at the grave itself and then guess what if they're going to stay the night now they can stay in my hotel as well so it's a little nefarious it's a little tricky of sorts but if that is the case and most likely it is that's where this urban legend comes from it comes from none other than the fact that someone was just trying to drum up a way of, of making more business now there are others that state that even if um, like let's say the urban legend is so so long ago it doesn't mean the fact that it's not true and and the fact that it's not just made up by someone trying to drum up some business in fact it could just be that it was true because there are various versions of this throughout the world so whether this happened there 
in the Wales area, if it was in other parts of the world as well, then it's up to the, I guess, people to decide. But even though it, the, the way someone described it, even though it takes on a more, more like a folklore aspect, there's still some truth to it because lo and behold, there are bones or there were bones there within the grave itself. I guess it was exhumed at one point. And people found that there was a small dog literally there in the grave. So someone did take much care and they did uh, place a lot of affection towards that grave. So someone did, but I don't know if, again, it's, if it's 100% associated with the legend in this case of Llewellyn, the Prince of Wales, and then with his dog, Gellert, as well. So that's up to you to decide. So what do you guys think? This urban legend, the legend of Gellert, again, a bit of a downer. I wish there was something that was more positive uh, with regards to Gellert. If there's anything, it's the fact that, of course, if it, were, if it was true, you know, his legacy lives on to this day. People still travel there to that location on the belief that, uh, that he's there. And so when they go there, at least in his case, he survived all these hundreds of years. His heroic act did all these hundreds of years thereafter. And then on top of that, who knew? There was a Disney version almost of Geller, and it has to do with the Lady and the Tramp. Those of you that have seen this classic cartoon, I know I have when I was younger. It has a pretty, I guess, unsettling scene of sorts. It's when uh, the main dog, the Tramp, is being taken, I guess, away from... Uh, from our location our home of sorts to the pound because he was mistaken to have attacked the baby that like, there was the cradle that was overturned and then the owner came by and thought that that was having to do with the tramp having harmed the the actual baby itself but then it turns out that they discover that no there was actually a dead rat right near the curtain of the overturned cradle and that they, they realized that yes it was actually the tramp that was protecting the the baby itself well that seems to actually pay homage to the legend of Gellert almost down to the T if but for the fact though this one has a happy version because the tramp is saved at the end so it was nice to see I guess Disney was able to take that particular urban legend and they kind of tie it in in some way to its classic movie so alright everybody thanks again as always take care then